I really feel like the next step in, in the economic evolution of the world is the United States dollar is going to collapse all 100 week currencies if it gets on a crypto rail. If we have stable coin US dollars, I think that every currency other than the top dozen is going to collapse and all those countries are going to dollarize. And I think that Bitcoin is going to collapse all the weak assets. We know, we know enemy number one, gold. Gold is just an awful monetary asset, but it's not the only one. You know, investment properties and timberland and, you know, buying up natural gas rights, all, all the things people do to avoid putting money in a savings account that generates 0% yield, they're all choices. A significant collapse of currencies worldwide looms on the horizon, with Michael Saylor's latest proclamation emphasizing Bitcoin as the singular lifeline. In a recent interview, Saylor shared his insights on the future of currency and assets, particularly amid the potential demise of the U.S. dollar and the ascendancy of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Saylor envisions the cryptocurrency industry transitioning from its entrepreneurial phase to an institutional phase marked by heightened regulation and mainstream financial institution involvement. Saylor contends that the comparison between Bitcoin and fiat currencies should be contextualized within their respective strengths and weaknesses. He positions Bitcoin as a superior alternative to traditional assets such as gold, real estate, or investment properties. According to Saylor, Bitcoin's intrinsic characteristics make it poised to supplant these traditional assets, offering a more stable store of value in the long term. Stay tuned until the end of the video, where Saylor elucidates on how Bitcoin holds the potential to outstrip all other currencies. Ever feel like you're wasting your money on things that don't really matter? Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out on this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself now. Don't spend $12.50 on junk. Educate yourself on how to be successful in crypto using our crypto cheat guide. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Visit the website now and the link in the description for your exclusive copy. Start your journey to crypto success today. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Digital transformation of currency is something that it that will run very fast and very hard, and the Chinese clearly are concerned about it. Mm -hmm. The way a country, you know, a country is concerned about it is they're going to put in place capital controls, and they're going to be and they're going to be regulating the currency. Um, it happens that Bitcoin has a role because Bitcoin and the Lightning Network is a way to move digital currency. Right, even even when Jack Mahler's talks, right, when he's he's talking, he's saying, well, what we, what people want to do is send twenty five dollars from Chicago to El Salvador, so we convert it to Bitcoin, we wire it, and we flip it back again on the other end. What they're trying to do is they're trying to move the medium of exchange at the speed of light, and that's fine. The path of least resistance is the path of most. Uh, is the strategy of most likely success, right? It's like, if you want to be successful, then you step back and say, what am I trying to do? Well, I'm trying to give 8 billion people the strongest currency I can in the, in the, with the least amount of effort. And the strongest currency is the dollar, and the least amount of effort would be to put it on some kind of lightning rail or even a, a, a centralized finance system, a, put it on Facebook or put it on Apple, right? The problem is just they don't go to 8 billion people. Mm -hmm. But everybody in the world wants that. And then and then the second uh, thing to do is give them a property asset that they can hold as a long-term store of value. And if we focus on those two things, like what won't we focus on? I don't think we need to topple every government in the world, nor do I think we need to rewire the accounting systems. I, here's the problem with the accounting system. I, I've already pointed out that it is physically impossible to, to rewire them. For, for trillions of dollars, you couldn't do it. But let's say it was possible. It's still illegal, okay? <laughs> Which means you have to topple the government because the distinction between currency and property is a bright line distinction in the tax code of every nation. And the IRS determined in 2014 that Bitcoin was property and the US dollar is currency. In El Salvador, they made it possible to transfer Bitcoin without paying a tax. But in every other nation on earth, 
The bright line establishment is when you transfer property, you owe a tax. Mm -hmm. And that means that no rational investor would ever pay for anything with a property and no company would be able to pay for anything with the property because you're accelerating a taxable event. So unless you're willing to default on your taxes to your nation state, you can't use a property as a currency. You just can't. And so now you've got a simple, a simple observation. Do you simply want to give $100 trillion of dollars to everybody in the world and fix that problem? And do you want to give $100 trillion of property to everybody in the world and then improve the world? Or do you want to literally deconstruct every country and every nation straight state? And, and I think the answer is like, when you have the ability to make $100 trillion peacefully to the benefit of everybody, which is go left, that's the evolutionary strategy, and the enemy is gold. Or, but if we just declare war on gold, it could be a $100 trillion asset. I'm telling you, Bitcoin goes to $6 million a coin. And I don't know, the nation of gold, you know, puts out a rest warrant for us, right? What's gonna happen if we declare a war on the nation of gold and we stop paying our taxes to the nation of gold, right? Nothing. 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 And Bitcoin goes to six million. Or we can be in a dispute with every mayor, the FBI, the CIA, you know, Interpol, the United States military, the EU, everybody that's a patriot, everyone that's a nationalist, every political party, every politician, every corporation, including Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, every piece of technology, every institutional structure. You could do that. And, and is it better? No, you're not getting any more. You're not getting any more, right? I mean, it's, it's literally like, this is the path of least resistance. We have a technology, it's digital gold is worth a hundred trillion dollars. And this is the other, the other approach is a digital currency. We want to replace nation state currencies and we wish everybody would do that. And, and I guess it's kind of a philosophical issue, but if you think about it enough, like if you were a public company CEO, go interview 500 public company CEOs and ask them if they could physically rip out their accounting systems and if they could do business with the property. And every one of them is gonna say, I can't do business with the property. It's not practical, right? It's not legal. I'd be fired by my board for doing it. And here's the last point, it's like, like three people can buy three and a half billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and drive up MicroStrategy stock by a factor of 10 and make $10 billion for the shareholders, three people. Or I can have everybody quit, rip the bottom out of the company, destroy the company, lose everything and not make the money. I mean, that one of them is the revolutionary approach, the other is the evolutionary approach. So I, I, I think it's kind of a moot point mm. and what's, What's going to happen is the industry is maturing and it's going to move from the entrepreneurial phase, which was go fast, break things. We don't have a license. This is really cool technology. Look what we can do. It's going to move to the next phase, which is the institutional phase, which is, oh man, Silvergate Bank is issuing, you know, is issuing stable coins and I have to get an FDIC charter or I have to come public, or I have to file this. And I, th I think uh, if, if your goal is to make the world a better place, I think, I think the world will be a better, instead of comparing Bitcoin to the dollar, compare the dollar to the peso. Right, see, the, the, I, think, I, I think the false equivalence that happens all the time is people go, why would you, be, you know, why do you side with, uh, you know, uh, the dollar over Bitcoin. And the answer is I'm not, I'm siding with the dollar over the peso and I'm siding with Bitcoin over gold. And the mechanism, it just happens to be a bi, uh, a bipolar or like a, a, a dual model. In an inflationary environment, you might say, I, I guess this is my theory. In an, in an environment where you have nation states, 
and fiat currencies, the money decomposes into currency and property. And, you know, one is an asset, one is a appreciating asset, one is a depreciating asset, and it always happens. And the only question is, what is the property and what is the currency, right? And, and a hundred years ago, maybe the currency was whatever and goal was the property. And uh, then for a while, the property was sovereign debt. And then lately, before Bitcoin, the property was S&P index funds and th or, or it was real estate. And right now, the property is Bitcoin. And as long as there are governments on this earth that have the will to create their own currency, you're going to have this issue. Maybe you'll get... Um, Maybe you'll get some idealistic governments, like maybe you get the El Salvador model, but El Salvador's not even an idealist. If El Salvador is completely idealistic, they would have adopted Bitcoin and abolished the dollar, right? And you can make the other argument, which is if they had simply said Bitcoin's property and the dollar is the currency, and then they gave everybody the Shiva wallet with the Bitcoin, it would have been less disruptive to all the businesses that have to take Bitcoin. They just take, they just take stable coin on the lightning rail. In a recent dialogue, Michael Saylor underscores Bitcoin's supremacy over fiat currencies and conventional assets. He delves into the role of governments in fiat currency issuance and the complexities inherent in controlling monetary policies. Saylor contends that as long as governments retain control over currency issuance, financial instability remains unavoidable. Reaffirming his confidence in Bitcoin, Saylor emphasizes its superiority as a store of value compared to assets like gold, real estate, or sovereign debt. He highlights Bitcoin's fixed supply and decentralized nature, positioning it as an appealing long-term investment option. Envisioning a future where nations opt for Bitcoin over fiat currencies, Saylor suggests this transition could foster a more stable and equitable global economic landscape. Are you fed up of seeing how a handful of people seem to have it about money again?